I'm just here to make a, get a couple of things straight, okay? Which isn't always very easy. <laughs> uh, one of the most striking things about this whole catastrophe, 9-11, is that no heads rolled. You notice that? No heads rolled. I mean, obviously, somebody screwed up. No heads rolled. But lately, one head did roll. You know who I'm talking about? Van, Van Jones. Jones. Yeah. Van Jones's head rolled because he signed the 9-11 truth statement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, we yeah. can't have that. The 9-11 truth statement is obviously so demented, so extreme, so paranoid, that anyone who signs it has thereby demonstrated that he's unfit for any kind of government position, right? Well, I want to set the record straight about the 9-11 truth statement, which I signed, and which Woo! I'll sign again, you know, in 10 seconds. There's basically two things I want to say about this statement. One is that all it's doing is asking for an investigation. That's all it's doing. It's asking for an investigation. And why shouldn't there be another investigation? Now, let's leave aside for the moment all the wild, preposterous assertions that were made in the 9-11 report. And let's leave aside for the moment all the bizarre occurrences that the report didn't even address. Let's not even talk about those, okay? Let's just focus on what the Bush administration did to try to prevent there from being a commission in the first place, okay? They worked like dogs from day one to make sure there was no inquiry whatsoever. Now, after all of our major disasters over the last century, after the Titanic sank, after Pearl Harbor, after the Kennedy assassination, after the Challenger explosion, within a day, there were plans for commissions to study what had happened. Okay? Well, the Bush administration took two months to stir itself into public action, and the action they took was to start pressuring the Senate not to have a joint select committee to look into what happened. They threatened Tom Daschle. They told him that he had to restrict it to the failures of the CIA and FBI, or they would actually tar him as an Al-Qaeda sympathizer. And then they, I mean, I could go on for hours. In fact, I have been known to go on for hours about all the things that the administration did just to prevent the congressional investigation from taking place. Well, they certainly didn't want an independent commission. And it's only because of the pressure of the 9-11 families that the Bush administration was finally forced to agree to such a commission in the summer of 2002. But see, that commission had to base its work on the congressional report, and the congressional report was then classified, right? Okay, the fact is that the 9-11 commission was crippled from the start. It was budgeted at $3 million. $3 million. You know how much the Challenger Commission got? $50 million. You know how much white water cost? White water? What was the purpose of white water was so that Ken Starr could get his rocks off? White water cost over $40 million. And we're talking here about one of the most gruesome mass murders on American soil, a major crime, you know, the consequence of which has been the radical abridgment of our freedoms and the deaths of millions of people all over the world. Okay? And they gave it a budget of $3 million and an 18-month window to work in. And they pr proceeded to, you know, hold up people's security clearances and hold back documents and lie extensively to them. John Farmer, the legal counsel to the commission, has a book now coming out next spring called The Ground Truth. It's a very cautious book, as, as you would expect, but he makes the point that it seems that NORAD and the CIA and the FBI and the White House gave lots of false testimony to the commission. That's the commission's own counsel, okay? So it's, it seems to me to be what they call a no-brainer that there should be another investigation. We, I, let's put it this way, that there should be an investigation, okay? Let's have an investigation for the first time, all right? That's... 
that's point number one. Point number two. You know, in order to prevent the truth from coming out on many fronts, not just this one, the most useful thing you can do is to tar those who try to talk about it as loonies, as paranoids, as truthers, right? We are truthers. We're like birthers, right? We're like the people who say Obama was born, you know, in the Kremlin, or whatever they say. I don't know. Well, okay, that claim, in this case, that we're nuts, is based on the lie that the 9-11 truth statement asserts that 9-11 was an inside job. Okay? That's what Glenn Beck says. And if Glenn Beck says it, you know it's false. <laughs> an inside job. Now, it probably was an inside job. We don't know because we haven't had an investigation, right? Uh, but the fact is that the 9-11 truth statement does not say that. Point that out to people. This is what it says. I'm quoting from it. On August 31st, 2004, Zogby International, the official North American political polling agency for Reuters, released a poll that found nearly half, 49.3% of New York City residents and 41% of those in New York State, believe U.S. leaders had foreknowledge of impending 9-11 attacks and consciously failed to act. That's not the same as saying it was an inside job. To say they had foreknowledge is a perfectly rational claim because they were abundantly forewarned by all sorts of agencies that something like this was going to happen. They were forewarned by the CIA, August 16th, 2001. You know, Bin Laden determined to strike inside the U.S. They were informed by uh, the, the Mossad. They were informed by Hosni Mubarak in, in the summer, just before 9-11. He actually told Bush, he told the Americans, that there was a plan to stuff airliners with explosives and use them to assassinate the president at the G8 summit at Genoa. They were warned by the government of Jordan and possibly of Morocco. I mean, we could go on and on. Uh, there was an Iranian spy who was on trial in Germany, and he spoke extensively of a plot much like this, okay? So it's not a wild fantasy that they had foreknowledge, okay? It's, it's, it's grounds for looking into the question of why they didn't listen, or if they did listen, what they thought they were doing. So there's nothing crazy about the 9-11 truth statement. And all those people who've been snickering at it and, and, and ridiculing us as loonies and so on, you know, they haven't read it. They're following the official script. It's more convenient not to look into these issues, right? It's better for your career, let's face it, okay? But understand this. While it may be better for their careers, it's fatal for American democracy. Fatal, okay? That's what this is about, okay? To put this question on the ballot and give people a chance to vote on whether they have a real investigation is a matter, first of all, of common decency, honoring the memories of those who perished and the heroic first responders. It's also, you know, a matter of civic obligation, because we have to know What's going on? Sunlight is the best disinfectant, you know, and we have a body politic that's now gravely ill. It needs the disinfectant. We need it, okay? So, although our numbers today are small, I promise you that we actually represent a far larger number of Americans. Far larger. The American people are not imbeciles. They are ready to hear the truth about what's going on, and we can't learn the truth unless we have a proper investigation. So the city has to permit this. It has to happen. Thank you very much.